My name is James Morrell. I'm from California. I work at the University of Pennsylvania and also work at Lincoln University, That's the first historical degree given black institution in Pennsylvania. These three pieces are triptych called Power, one, two, and three. One ball, two legs, and three arms. This piece is interesting because this started off as an homage to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, a man who had an amazing career as an athlete, as a basketball player. He is a political figure. He is an academic. The piece is underneath the fabric. You can see the imprinting or the pushing out, the shake of wood. It was like three bodies um, preparing for the next stage. I have a film and design background. That's why I majored in undergrad. Making objects happened in grad school. That was a pivot for me. I told the chair of the department I didn't want to make video art anymore. It was a rupture. My professor in grad school, the late great Terry Atkins, came to my studio and he, you know, he talked to me about it and he said, well, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I don't know, leap of faith, sculpture, objects. So he looked at me. He walked out of my studio and I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know what happened. He would leave me objects in my studio, on my desk, notes of films. He would draw, he would scribe things. The conversation, it started. Figures of Thought was a class that I took with other folks in grad school. I engaged Terry in, in his, on, on his turf. One semester I spent with him and uh, he passed away in that spring. And I made, I made this work with him in mind, who I believed him to be as a person, as a human being, as a father, as an artist, as a husband, right, as a mentor. How does one create sound and music but you're, you're in this containment, it's this riddle. This notion of, of being in cage or trapped, you know, or incarcerated, but yet and still this, these sounds, these notes, these lyrics, they, they continue. And um, he continues to live within my mind, my, my heart. Just thinking about materials, I have a relationship with wood, but my first real piece I was thinking about marble, but I couldn't afford marble. It wood can be shaped and formed into almost anything. Almost anything and it actually something nothing that you can barely you can't the human eye can not even see it's invisible. When when the universe winks at you, pay attention. Looking back, but now I'm 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 here in the now, which is the past, now is the past, now is the past. I've always made objects, and it was always there, but no one said, Jim, <laughs> come here, what did you? The starting point was a Ikea box when I was moving into my studio in grad school. And I stared at these boxes for a while, and that's when, when it just started germinating, it started happening. And the box lived on the floor, and then it lived on the wall. All the pieces that are, are living in, in this space that were created, they have this lineage or this like begatting. Nothing is, is thrown away, everything is recycled and found materials. But there's a little piece of something, uh, a chip of copper, um, dirt, you know, soil, um, wood, dust that gets recirculated. So I make it an effort to collect and to keep this residue. Yeah, my workbench. It was pre-made and I put it together and it's extremely heavy. When you hit a workbench, it's like a blank slate and then you create and put dog holes in it and you make it your own. 
And so I went through this process and tools and clamps and all these different things. We see the end result and outcome of making work, but we really don't see what made it possible. The desk is, is a container and a holder. It's also this document that has the starting date to all of the pieces and they're etched, glued, scarred, bled onto its surface to each of the pieces that that's this birthing place. But to try to bring this intimacy or this openness up to creation or being or spending time with something. Workbenches are like a, a thing. You know, you can have a cookie cutter workbench, but it grows, it turns and changes, shifts mm -hmm. into like this embodiment of like yourself. So it's kind of almost like a, a photo album. There's, there's so much unseen. Althea Gibson, she's, she's the GOAT, not taking anything from anyone else. I just completely and ultimately just fell in love with her and her whole story and her whole history. Very few people know her, the patron saint of strength, fortitude. I have familiarity you know, with the game and it's 10% physical and it's 90% mental. My mortality is, is running through the works. Death is inevitable. How does one prepare oneself for that transition? What is meaningful to you right now in this life? Yes, materials, yes, politics, yes, who I am and what I embody, what, it, what my body represents, what people see or, or feel. I hear differently. I feel differently through the objects. So, I don't know, it sounds silly, but just uh, a, ce a celebration of life, of being, you know, just to celebrate communally. I don't feel that it's just random things colliding where there's order. Everything happens at the right moment and at the right time. One thing I have had experience with, with, with all the materials, with, especially what history, um, the tactileness, the residue and dust, it's something that I'm still learning to listen, to really listen to the materials because they have so much to say, so many things are telling.